evil scam art schools in the U.S. Chain of art colleges across the country is scheduled to close tomorrow. I'm embarrassed. I'm ashamed to have gone there. Everything I'm going to say is alleged. If, if you transfer, basically, you, you keep the debt. After a report revealed $13 million for student aid had not gone to students. Do not attend any school affiliate with the Art Institute. It's not just Novi, 18 art institutes across the country will soon be closing. I've definitely been frustrated this whole week and didn't even find out until yesterday. That has scammed tens of thousands of students out of a ridiculous amount of tuition money. Which is actually where I went to school for four years and here's my diploma, you know, just in case you just Sometimes you gotta prove your stuff, you know what I'm saying? Don't look at the date. Don't worry about how old I am. But anyway, I wanted to watch this video to see if this person's experience was like mine. They talk about how it's a scam and the school actually is shut down. I think they have a few locations still, but most of their locations are shut down. A college, university, or any place of higher learning that prioritizes making money from their students over providing a quality education. The network of the art institutes. A lot of artists are aware, and even I was aware back in the day, of the kind of like scammy nature that the art institutes gave off. See, I had no idea of any scammy nature. They were the only art-related school that came to my city, and I didn't really know about a whole bunch of other ones. I know the Art Center is a big one, Full Sales, I've heard a lot about, but this place just seemed like it. But I wasn't aware how awful this network of schools truly is until I started doing research for it for this video. Um, so buckle up. The Art Institutes is a collection of for-profit private art schools. Keyword private art school or any school means that you have to pay way more. I didn't know that at the time. You feel special and especially because the Art Institute was technically based, like it's you learn technical skills, you learn how to use programs, you do a lot of projects, color theory, composition, still lifes, and you're just creating all the time and juggling all these projects all the time. At its most in 2012, had a total of 50 campuses. That is too many schools. Yes, 50 campuses. So the Art Institute was in all states. And when I was there, I believe that was the case as well. But my location at Indiana was a branch of Las Vegas. I remember every time we would sign stuff or we would sign up for a new semester, we would always go under the Las Vegas location because we were just a branch of theirs. So we didn't even have some of the funding that the fully established locations would have. That's an interesting story, we'll get into that later, but let's continue. I myself actually toured one of the campuses when I was applying to art school back in 2010, and I kind of got like a weird vibe from the tour that I was on and decided not to apply. See, I got a weird vibe when I went to Chicago because I saw an artist on DeviantArt. That was a big deal back then. I was like, I wanna be you. Like, I wanna go, where did you go to school? I wanna draw like you. I wanna color like you. Their work back then, I loved so much. And I was so sure that I wanted to go wherever they went to learn how to do what they do. And I went on the tour at Chicago and I felt really weird. It just felt very impersonal. They also, their curriculum was also more tailored to game development. Yeah, but I, I there was a location in Indiana and the experience was very different there. They had a lot of variety to their major and it was closer and it was cheaper. So that helped. <laughs> they got me in the door with their kind of like sleek branding and their programs seemed legit. They were also fairly comparable in price, in tuition than other schools I was looking at in the area. In the last couple of years, they were forced to close down almost all of their campuses and they now have just eight schools left with the Art Institute name. Eight schools left out of 50? There were 50. You can recognize what school is an art institute because there are plenty of schools that are like the Institute of Art at blah, blah, blah. But if it has that red AI logo, I'll throw it up on the screen right now, then it is an art institute. So let's look at what happened between 2010 and now. 
So this is about the time that I actually entered the Art Institute. 2010, I was just leaving high school and I started in July. In the late 2000s and early 2010s, the entire Art Institute network of schools was owned by the for-profit company, the Education Management Corporation, which was partially owned by Goldman Sachs. At that time, students started to come forward saying that the school was trying to recruit an insane number of new students that they couldn't like actually teach. I could see a gradual decline and we lost teachers, we lost staff, and I remember it getting to the point where we lost so many people that some of the graduated students were becoming teachers. So you would have class with someone and then they would be teaching you and it'd be so awkward. It's great that they got an opportunity, but you really got the grasp that it was on the way out. I remember teachers were moving to other schools, teaching other places, other locations, opening their own classes and workshops. So it was, it was so sad to see. And I warned people that were thinking about going there after I left because I could see its decline even in my four years being there. But I think some people did go regardless and it did eventually shut down. So I warned you, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> tried to, try to help you. <laughs> this was later called a high pressure recruitment mill. They were also constantly hiking up tuition prices so much that over the span of your degree, you would be paying rapidly more uh, each year that you attended. Many students felt that the programs at the art institutes didn't prepare them for their field and they couldn't actually get a job after they graduated. The art institute itself gave me a job as an audio technician and I worked that for four years. Two years, I loved it. The last two years, it was horrible <laughs> and drained me. It kind of derailed my motivation for a creative career. I think I started creating YouTube videos back then that are now deleted and you'll never see. Former graduate in 2008, Brandon Schultz told CNBC he couldn't complete tests potential employers gave him after graduating. He said the courses were just a bunch of beginner lessons on how to use these programs. I will agree, but this really depends on the teachers that you have. For example, we would learn Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects, and we were expected to complete these projects while still finding our way through the software. It was a juggling act between creativity and then meeting the demands of the actual project. So you're learning entry-level stuff and you're expected to do these projects. And at the end of the class, you'd basically do like a short film or you would do a commercial and you got to really dabble. It just felt like you were getting time to be curious and explore different possible routes to go creatively. A very creative place to be, but as far as job opportunities in the industry, there was not many. And I think one of the biggest things that I would say is a big part to that is they didn't have for my major internships. It wasn't a requirement. So when you don't have an internship, you're not getting to know someone in the industry, you're not developing those relationships, and ultimately, it's up in the air if you're gonna get a job in your industry. I would say anybody that's thinking about art school at any point in time, you need to be working with people in your industry while you're in college. Because in 2012, the Department of Justice charged the Education Management Corporation with $11 billion in federal funding fraud. I did not know that. 2012, $11 billion. And in 2015, they were forced to pay over $200 million in settlements. This is so interesting because this is probably about the time where I saw the decline even more, where we started to lose programs like study abroad, where we were supposed to go to Japan. We started to lose whole levels of staff members. And as the years went on even further after I left, we lost our library. We lost other departments. We were two buildings and we lost that other building completely. Including loan forgiveness to more than 80,000 students. So when it comes to loans, don't even get me started. Because the Art Institute was declining, every year I would have a new financial advisor. So when it was time to sign up for new classes, if I was taking out a loan, I had no knowledge of the impact and repercussions it would have on me. Basically, you take out a loan and it has a separate interest rate with it. That would vary from five to nine percent. When it came time for me to graduate, every time I took out a loan, which was every semester, four times a year, I had a variety of different interest rates. 
Basically, every time I would make a payment on my loans, it would go back to the same amount the next month when it was time to make another payment. No one had ever mentioned about consolidating my loans and the many times that I spoke with the financial aid, it was very mysterious and ambiguous and complicated. There was not much transparency and it felt like they were glad to take your money. If you're thinking about going to art school, I would suggest getting some scholarships. And if you don't know if you wanna go in person or online, I would check out as many things online as you can before considering going to a physical location. Ultimately, the cost is so high. And if there's no guarantee, which there is never a guarantee with any college that you'll get a job where you'll be able to pay down that loan, it may be you, but it's not typical. So just bear that in mind, allegedly, allegedly, Allegedly. That loan forgiveness, however, only equated to about $1,300 per student after everything was said and done. When the Education Management Corporation filed for bankruptcy, they were purchased by a faith-based charity organization called the Dream Center. How nice. For $60 million. This charity had no experience operating universities and soon ran the art institutes further into the ground. The programs declined so far that many of the art institute schools lost their accreditation and then they didn't tell their students that they lost accreditation but continue to charge them tuition essentially deceiving all of their students that they were getting an accredited degree then they faced eviction from nine campuses because they failed to pay creditors in 2018. so 2018 i was far gone but i believe that might have been when the location in indiana actually did close i remember career services used to be a whole fleet of people in there it was a full office cubicles everywhere and it was reduced to one person that was it even the job postings and job opportunities had changed where they would have been more industry-based now they were more stuff you could find in a Google search very easily. Now, I got cool opportunities out of the senior show where I was offered an opportunity to teach. So I was an animation major, but I was teaching classes about graphic design. I was teaching classes about stop motion animation. I was teaching classes about photography because I had a general knowledge of the fundamentals of all of those things. And that was enough to teach someone else that's entry level to help them understand those concepts. I was teaching these classes at a local art center. So it wasn't a university. It was an art program for the summer for ages as young as eight years old, all the way up to high school age. So it's very different than teaching my direct peers or preparing people for the industry. So with that in mind, in my opinion, it made it a little bit easier to translate my knowledge to them because they hadn't entered college yet and it wasn't hinging upon them getting a job right after. I was also getting a lot of freelance clients to do graphic design work for their logos and flyers and so many other things as well. Soon after, they shut down 16 of the art institutes, leaving more than 26,000 students in massive college debt. Now when this happened, I actually heard about this and I was so glad that I had gotten out before this happened, but I can't imagine the devastation of pursuing a degree, the program being canceled and the school being completely closed. So there's no promise of you ever completing your degree. You're just stuck in the middle. And I don't know if those credits are even transferable to other schools, so you may be starting from scratch. I really wish when we started that there was more of a focus on building our network and building our social media. You're creating a lot of work at a high volume when you're in art school. You're very inspired, well you should be hopefully, and that's really the time to start putting your work out there. Great. This affected international students even more significantly, like in the case of Sarah Fuad. Sarah Fuad moved from Saudi Arabia in 2016 to attend the Art Institute of Seattle, and she was just one semester away from graduating a year early when the school shut down. If she didn't find a new school, she was going to be forced to leave the U.S. within 60 days because her student visa would run out. She told the Seattle Times that she felt broken, and she said, I'd rather die than go home with nothing. First of all, it's really hard to get a student visa or any visa of any kind. I don't know that life, but I can only imagine what that's like. Another student, Blair Brown, was also a semester away from graduating when the school shut down. And she said, now that we're closing this quarter, all of the work I did, none of that matters. I'm a pretty confident person, but even me, faced with this, I feel like I was scammed, like I was stupid. I don't know who in their right mind wants to have Art Institute of Seattle on their resume, trying to get a job after this. The Dream Center also soon went bankrupt 
and the institutes changed hands again when it was sold to the nonprofit organization, the Education Principle Foundation. Essentially meaning that the Education Principle Foundation is allegedly operated and run by Colbeck, a for-profit investment company. So this investment company under a different name now owns the remaining eight art institutes. So how many students are left after this slow crumble and failure of the art institutes? Well, between the eight remaining campuses, which include Atlanta, Miami, Tampa, Austin, Dallas, Houston, San Antonio, and Virginia Beach, there are a total of 6,893 students as of 2019. 6,893 students in eight locations. That is crazy. I can't imagine what type of programs they had left at that point because they were 50 locations, now down to eight locations. They had some of them completely closed mid program. I'm sure to save money at that point. I can't imagine what type of education they were getting. I don't even want to think about it. Especially when the time that I left, they had more money available. And the programs that we had were left so much to be desired. So let's do some math. Before aid, each school costs around $33,000 in tuition per year. Meaning between all eight schools, they are charging their students a total of $227.5 million in tuition every single year. You're paying a higher rate for a lower level of education. And that part, allegedly, 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 that part is so sad to see because I remember when I went to the Art Institute, we were so excited about the opportunity to be able to dream up what we were thinking creatively. And fortunately, we got out before it declined to this level. But to imagine someone that was excited, maybe even a freshman at this time, coming in paying $30,000 for a load of classes that could end at any time because other campuses have closed and ah, not having the resources because there's there's nothing left. I mean, you're you're getting what's left. That doesn't include room and board or any other fees, just tuition. The art institutes are probably one of the most extreme examples of art schools. And that's a good point. It doesn't even include room and board. That is just tuition. And I know a lot of people wanted to stay on campus. When I went, a lot of people were so excited about being around artists and some people were from different states so they couldn't, they didn't have anywhere else to go. They didn't even live in the state that they were going to school at. So, oh my. When I was going to the Art Institute, our, our room and board actually changed. Now, when we first started, we were in apartments, which was crazy. It was like an upgrade, especially compared to other dorms. But then we eventually moved to a smaller area that was more like lofts. It was still very nice, but it was a space downgrade to what we had before. If I could go back in time, I really wouldn't change my experience. I think that I came at a time where there was still quality teaching and I still had an opportunity to advance my skills. I think the thing that made it different for me as well is I came in as an artist. I was not trying to be an artist. I was not expecting them to teach me how to be an artist. I was already drawing all the time. I was just learning the fundamentals for the industry and that's really what the schooling helped me do. It helped me learn software and programs and creative processes and the rules and dabble, like I said earlier, in 2D animation, 3D animation, in graphic design, photography, all of these different subjects because my major was media arts and animation I got to experiment with. The only downside of that is you get very general. So you get a lot of opportunities, but they're very random. Like sometimes people will be like, hey, do you do filming? Do you do editing? Do you do graphic design? Do you do websites? Do you do portraits? Like it's very all over the place. So I think that at some point you need to find out what you really enjoy doing and college was that time for me but i would say to anybody watching this video if you can narrow down what you really enjoy doing before you go to college for art school if you for example are interested in 2d animation try 2d animation 
understand that process, do as much of it as you can before you go on that journey, and then find a school that allows you to dive deeper into those things. If you find that after you jumped in, you don't enjoy it, then that's your indication. If you find that you do enjoy it, but the curriculum doesn't really add to your knowledge and you feel like you can learn it on your own, then do that. There's a lot of people online getting hired off of their work. If you're amazing at your work, it really doesn't matter where you went to school at. There was a comment earlier from somebody saying that they didn't want to have this school on their resume. And honestly, I don't know of any time that it's mattered. When I'm coming into a job or an opportunity, whether it's freelance or I'm working with the studio or company, they just wanna see the caliber of work that I'm able to provide. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what grade I got in school for an art related task or a creative task. They just wanna see if I can get the job done. So. I wouldn't let that detour you if you have gone to the Art Institute, if you're one of the unfortunate ones, and I'm so sorry you went through this, where they cut the curriculum and you're just picking up the pieces where you left off, but there's so many opportunities out there. I would encourage you guys that may be in that scenario, build your portfolio up, and there's a lot of legal going on right now, so if you can get some money back, then great on you. I don't know if that's something that I can do, but if I can, I would definitely do as well because that would be a benefit to me. For example, for me, I only had one or two classes about digital painting when I was in art school and I loved digital painting and I would have loved to go deeper in those classes, but I only had two. And had I went somewhere that made more of a focus on pre-production with concept art and stuff like that, that would have been a great benefit to me. But I didn't have that opportunity, unfortunately. But speaking of classes tailor-made for you, I'm starting a course and I want you guys to let me know below what are some things that you'd be interested in learning what are some things that stick out to you that you don't do well that you want to do better put it below in the comments I want to start getting people signed up that are interested in learning uh, from me and I'd be excited to teach you guys watch this video next about paper like to see how I feel about that I have a lot of opinions <laughs>